Welcome to G3 Investors. We're going to take a look at the market for the week ended February 17th, 2023. Well, we had mixed economic news this week and the market reacted with a second week of mixed or sideways movement. Uh, as you can see here on this chart of the NASDAQ composite index, uh, CPI and PPI inflation da data came out hotter than expected, increasing uh, the Fed's rate hike worries. But then retail sales for January were up 3% versus 1% expected, in indicating that we have a, cons con uh, a strong cons consumer and consumer demand. The NASDAQ only gained 4.6% uh, this week, and it has formed what is traditionally referred to as a cup with a handle formation. This is also happens to be a bullish flag since we're trading above the 200-day moving average. And it closed just above resistance, this green dotted line here, at 11,600. If we take a look at the S&P 500, we can see a very similar look. We have a, a golden cross here, but we are trading below resistance on this. So the even though the the S&P 500 is a little stronger index, technically speaking, it pulled back below its resistance level at 4101 and closed at 4079. And it, and that that again was a a loss of 0.3% for the week. Now, if we look at the Russell 2000, uh, it, it's the strongest index of the bunch. We have a golden cross, and it's it pulled back, but then took took off and didn't pull us back on as much on Thursday and Friday as the others did. So this is a cup with hand pattern again, and it's a bullish flag, but we're living pretty comfortably above its uh, resistance at 1900. So while the market pulled back for the second straight week in a row, we're still in an uptrend with the major indexes all trading above their 200 day moving average. Now, if we look at our model, you can see that we've gained, we've got a gain for the month of 11.6% bringing our year-to-date total to 27.9%. We're absolutely crushing the S&P and the NASDAQ by 21 percentage points and 15 percentage points. We go to back to the market and we look at, you know, we the model had no positions at the end of the week. But if we look at, uh, we get, if we look at just, you know, like any ETF, like I'll pick SMH, there's SMH again, cup with handle formation above resistance at 235. Uh, let's see, pick uh, XLF. That's financials. A little bit fell back in below its resistance, but again, a cup, cup and handle, and it looks pretty, looks pretty strong. If you uh, take a look at transports, that's always an important one. Again cup with handle and uh, a pullback, you know, but it's still comfortably above its 200 day and it's got the golden cross. Now, if we look at the ETFs that did pull back this week, we've got XLY, which is consumer discretionary. And that's, that's a little scary. That's more of a pullback close, just sitting just above its 200 day moving average here. So, that's not looking quite as strong or as healthy as the others. If we look at XLV, which is healthcare, it's sitting right at its 200-day moving average, sitting right at it, right on this, right on it, just a point above, or 40, 40 cents above 130.60. So that's looking pretty weak. If we look at IYR, which is real estate. We're setting right on the 200 day moving average. And if we look at silver, IO silver, it pulled back and it's starting to look weak now. It's just barely above its 200 day moving average. And 
then last but not least, let's look at what was weak from last week to see if it got even worse weaker. Well, we had uh, USO, which is the United States oil fund or oil and gas prices, and that got weaker. It was below its 200 day, and now it's below its 50 day. So weak got weaker, and strong didn't get too much stronger. The other one is, which is totally in a bear market, which is the UNG, which is the United States Natural Gas Fund or oil and gas or gas prices. Now, if we look at uh, TLT, it's not one we trade, but it's 20-year Treasury bonds. You can see it's getting, it's pulling back as well. So, you know, if we, it's hard to say where this market's headed. We still are in an uptrend, but you, you get the feeling that it it could change. It could go either way at this point in time. Let's take a quick look at the S&P 500 heat map for the week ended. This is week number seven, ended on February 17th. And winners include, uh, let's see, we got Cisco at 7.4%. We got Tesla at 5.8%. Uh, analog devices at, at uh, 8%. Uh, losers, the oil and gas group. I mean, they range from 5.3 up to 9.5. Well, there's just all over the map, but not very, not looking very good. And then uh, there's PayPal. That's down 7.6%. Eli Lilly at 4.84%. That's not looking too good either. And then... Yeah, Norfolk, Norfolk and Southern, that's Warren Buffett's corporation, and that's the one that got in trouble in Ohio, in Palestine, Ohio, with the, the rail derailment or whatever you want to call that. Well, that's all for this week's vi video. Next week, we have the FOMC minutes coming up from their February 1st meeting. They'll come out on Wednesday, and then on Friday, we get personal spending and PC E prices. I'm Greg Gallagher. Good luck and good trading.